Hey, Shalom, Shalom, Akim, of course, call Haloyim, Yahawa, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Racha, Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that rule and teach as well. Peace and Shalom to the Akim out there and the elect, which the elect consists of the men, women, and children selected to make it out of here from the coming nuclear destruction, all right? I'm the brother, Zayan Al of the DC camp, coming at you with another video. I'm actually going to make it a keep in mind video. Um, as you can see, I've got some scriptures on this notepad on my phone. And you can only go over so long with the title. So I just put something brief so that I can name it, you know, accordingly later. All right. But I got a few scriptures underneath of it. And I'm going to go into a couple of them, as you see. All right. So it's basically going to be called Keep in Mind, um, Compare According to the Scriptures, Who Today follows what is written okay according to, to according you know to the scriptures who today which men which group out there follows closer to what's written in the holy scriptures okay and this is important because the scripture says let the most high be true but every man a liar we have to follow closer to the scriptures and not our own. Okay. All right. Matter of fact, you know, that's how the spirit does. So let me get this scripture here, a scripture that we all know. This is uh Proverbs three and one, the rewards of wisdom. It says my son, forget not my law which law also means precepts and commandments. Okay. Precepts. All right. Even every last one of these, uh, uh, different, um, uh, uh, scriptures are what considered precepts or considered the law. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments for length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. So why would I want to stray away from these words? If these words allow length of days and a long life, why would I want to follow after my own heart? And we're going to keep reading. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee, bind them about thy neck, write them upon the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of the Most High and man. Verse 5, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. This is a scripture we always get, different brothers in different camps, apostles, elders, big bros on down. Every brother at some point, get Proverbs 3 and 5, okay? But it's heavy because it says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Do a lot of these different groups today, these different people out there calling themselves Israelites, do they truly put their trust in the Lord with all thine heart? Do they when you examine their actions? Because these people will be first to say that, you know, um, let's get our lick back. You know, you know what I'm talking about. Okay. Let's go avenge ourselves on the Palestinians. Okay. Let's, let's, let us put our strength in numbers and get some get back. Um, these people would say, um, why are you out there? I'm not saying now I'm, I'm transitioning over to some of these different, uh, ones out there that know that they're Israelites and what they have said to us over the years. Okay. I'm transitioning over. All right. It's not all pertaining to just one group of people saying this. All right. So, okay. Um, you have people out there that have told us that, um, why are you out there in the cold? You snow dummies, you out there in the cold for no reason. Okay. Uh, why are you over here? Ain't nobody out there. Why are you, you have to understand that the men of the Lord, Trust in the Lord with all their heart. Okay. Whatever the Lord has us set to do, we're going to do it. All right. Oh, you have other Israelite uh, people out there, other Israelite groups or men. I'll just say that other people that know that they're Israelites that said that we are cowards because we avoid confrontation. Okay. And we don't avoid confrontation. We just know when and when not to do things. It's discernment. Okay. Obviously, if there's a, uh, uh, a gay parade, okay. The whole entire street is a gay parade. We might want to move over a block. Okay. 
All right, if there's a Palestinian march going on right there, we might want to go around the corner. Okay? Stuff like that. Right? Um, Eric, case of point, another thing. If we're teaching and there's another Israelite group that comes up and teaches on our spot and they know that we teach at that spot, what are we going to do? We're going to pack up and go to another spot. Why? Because our goal is to teach and do the will of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai over our own personal will. As bad as the flesh is saying, man, get them niggas off our corner. Get this. Let's blast these niggas. Let's do, ah, according to what I want to do. Ah, as much as the flesh is trying to make you do that, okay, we have to constantly be minded of what the spirit wants, okay? We put ourselves down and we elevate the spirit, okay? All right, now let's get this scripture here, uh, John 3 and 30, and it says, one of the scriptures I like, it says, he must increase, but I must decrease. Let's look at some translation comparisons. As simple as that scripture is, is, is in, in its simplicity, look at the other translations. It says, he must become greater and greater, and I must become less and less, because it's not about us. It's about doing the will of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. He must become greater and greater, and I become less and less. When we do this work, it is for the will of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, not our own, not our own glorification. Okay, Yahweh Shai has to be elevated, and when Yahweh Shai is elevated, guess what? That puts glory towards the heavenly Father. Okay. Now, let's get Matthew, the fifth chapter, right? Matthew 5 and verse um, 16. It says, let your light so shine before men. Okay, this words, you know, this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that you've been given, let it be put to work. Let it be shown. Actually, do the work. And this light that we've been given is not our light. Okay? The light is from Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Okay? It's not for us to shine for ourselves. It's, it's to what? Uh, showcase Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Okay? It says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works, but do what? And glorify your Father which is in heaven. So again, the harp on that point, our goal is to do the will of the Father. Even though we're doing good works in our faith, as it says in the scripture, that they may see your good works, even though we're doing good works, what is it doing? And that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Not us, even though they're seeing our works in our faith, but even though they're seeing our works in our faith, they're glorifying the Father. You see, capital F, the Father, Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai, which is in heaven. That is the goal, okay? That's the goal over our own personal matters, on, on what's in our minds. Going back to Proverbs, the third chapter, Proverbs 3 and verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. So when you get these different people that say we avoid confrontation, we're cowards. Uh, we ran this, we ran that. We packed up. Why are you out there in the cold? What's the reasoning? Why are you preaching nobody's there? Yada, yada, yada. The end all be all is that what? We are trusting in the Lord with all thine heart. We don't care what you got to say. If we're doing the will of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. I just said it earlier briefly. Let the most high be true and every man a liar. Why do we care about what you got to say when it's the Heavenly Father's program? Do you really care about the Heavenly Father's program? Or do you care about what you're doing? You see? So again, uh, for ones out there that's listening, do a comparison, okay? Do a comparison according to the scriptures who today, okay, follow the scriptures. Do that comparison. Now, I'm going to get a couple of scriptures, right? Now, this is John 14 and 11. It says, believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me or else believe me for the very work's sake. Now, let me get that in the blue letter, 
okay, where I got it in the Holy Scriptures. All right, John 14 and 11. Matter of fact, I'll read up. John 14 and verse 9, Yahweh shall I say unto him, Have I been so long time with, with you, Philip, that yet has thou not known me, Philip? Okay, it says, He that, Salak, and let me read it again, Yahweh shall I say unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet has thou not known me, Philip? He that have seen me have seen the Father. And how sayest thou, then shew us the Father? Because that's what Philip said, shew us the Father. But if you've seen Yahweh Shai, you've seen the Father. Yahweh Shai is a spitting image of the Father. Even when you look at the descriptions, the descriptions are damn near identical. Okay? Right? Even the description, when you go to uh, the Ancient of Days description, and when you go to uh, Yahweh Shai's description. Okay? He said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. It said, Believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He doth the works. Because ultimately all is to the glory of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. Okay? Yahweh Shai came not to do his own will, but the will of the one that sent him. Okay? All right, verse 11, it says, Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me. For the very work's sake. Okay? All right, now I'm going to get on a translation comparison. Get the uh, NLT. It says, just believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or at least believe because of the work you have seen me do. Right? Fine. You don't want to... GMS comes off hard. We rebuke. We come off this and that. People don't like how we, we talk this and talk that when ultimately we're, we're discussing things according to doctrine. We don't have problems with the individual. We have problems with the individual that's what? Breaking doctrine. It's a difference. We don't have a personal problem. When I say we don't have a problem with the individual, we don't have a personal problem with individuals. We have a problem with them when they're constantly going against the doctrine of the Lord. Once again, this is about the Lord's program. So we have an issue when you have people going against the Lord's program. Okay? Right? So let me, um, let me, let me see this. It says, um, let me read it again. Salaki. It says, NLT, just believe that I'm in the Father and the Father is in me or at least believe because of the work you have seen me do. Fine. Again, like I was saying, we coming off this, we coming off that. You don't like us for whatever reason because of what we're saying out of our minds, mouths. But again, what we're saying is according to doctrine, according to the Lord's will. Okay, fine. But it also says, or at least believe because of the work you have seen me do. When have brothers, start with our apostles on down, when have brothers ever slacked on doing the work of the Lord? When have we not been out there week in and week out? Okay? Uh, in season and out of season. When have we not made our bodies a living sacrifice? When you have men that say that we're cowards because we don't go to the hood and stuff like that, we've responded and said, yes, we have gone to these places. We have gone to these places. We have been there, done this and done that been there, been here, been there. We've done this already. So when you have men that say these things, do they really mean it in sincerity? Or are they just so emotional that they just try to just uh, uh, down us with any old thing just to make themselves feel better? Are they doing it according to the will of the Heavenly Father? Or are they just saying it because they're emotional? All right? Which is it? Okay, and we believe the latter. We believe these men are just saying it because they're emotional and they don't believe in taking proper re uh, uh, rebuke and reproof. Just being emotional. These men, okay, these other Israelite groups, they don't go out in all seasons consistently. A lot of these different groups, they don't go out uh, in all seasons consistently. When it's cold, you don't see a lot of them out. When it's extremely hot, you don't see a lot of them out. Okay? Week in and week out, you don't see a lot of them out.
but how dare them come at us and say that we're cowards? First of all, are we cowards because we're not going to the hood? Or are we cowards because we're doing the will of the Father? You have to say the will of the Father, even though you don't want to say that. You would have to say we're cowards to do the will of the Father. Why? Because what did the Lord tell us to do? Okay? The Lord said what? Look at the balance. Let's go to Proverbs, the first chapter. Proverbs 1 and verse, uh, let me see. Proverbs 1 and 20. Wisdom crieth without, without, she uttered her voice in the streets. She crieth in the chief place of concourse. In the openings of the gate, in the city, she uttered her words, saying, See? So she cried in the chief places of concourse, the chief places where business happens. Okay? Where a lot of people are. Crowds. Okay? So you have that aspect of when we go out and teach, we teach in the chief places of concourse. That's this one aspect. All right? But also you have men teaching everywhere. The scripture says what? This gospel shall be preached in all the world. So you have uh, a brothers preaching in places that are not so heavily trafficked as well. All avenues are covered when it comes to the word of the Lord being preached. Okay. But one of the main places is what? Chief places of concourse. Now, when you tell us, why aren't we going to the hood? Now, the scriptures... Let me get some of these other scriptures now, since I'm talking about it. The scripture says what? When you go to John 7 to 24, judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgments. Okay? We judge not according to the appearance. The appearance is carnal, fleshly. Now, though there are Israelites out there that look like other nations that may not necessarily be living in the hood. So when you say, why don't we go to the hood, you're essentially saying, why don't you go to the places where it's predominantly black, so-called black, where the demographics is, is what? Predominantly Negroes. Which we told people from time to time and over and over and over, this is not a color thing. This is not a black only thing. Is Negroes, so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, and also the ones of us that have been scattered abroad that look like other nations. So if that's the case, do the, the ones that's been scattered abroad that look like other nations, are they predominantly in the hood with the phenotypical looking Jake? The average looking Jake? Are those foreign uh, looking Jake are they living in the same hoods as the traditional looking Jake when I say phenotypical? No. But where's a place where all the Israelites are going to be? Places like the highways, places like the chief places of concourse. So when you have the men out there teaching in the cities, we're doing the will of the Father. We're not, we're, hey, to include people that live in the hood, they go to the chief places of concourse as well. So you're covering all grounds. So why would we listen to a stupid nigga tell us that we're cowards and we can go to the hood when it's bigger than that? It's bigger than the hood. Again, this gospel has to be preached in all the world. It's bigger than black. So-called. See, again, people, you have to do a comparison who today follows closest to the scriptures. All right. And in contrast, you can see the ones out there that don't follow according to the scriptures by their actions. OK, they can say all they want to about us. You this, you that. Are you following what the scriptures say? That's the end all be all. Okay. All right. So again, to go back on that point, believe John 14, 11, believe me that I am in the father and father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. You don't like how we come off fine. Look at our works. Look at the week in week out. Look at the apostles getting on men to do videos daily and weekly. Okay. 
just to put the fire in brothers' asses to do more for the spirit of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. And it's all in truth and sincerity. It's all because of the times that we're uh, approaching. It's all in truth and sincerity. At the end of the day, the Lord knows who, who's uh, truly sincere. All right? Look, 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 at, look at all the different things that GMS is doing and brothers waking up over the, uh, across the world without brothers having to go over there and set it up. It's just the fact that brothers is teaching constantly on the highways and hedges and putting up videos, and therefore people around the world are waking up. Look at the very work's sake. We're cowards, but we're always going out there on the highways and hedges constantly, weekly, when the other groups, a lot of these other men or these other groups are not going out weekly. They're not going out uh, in certain seasons. But we're the cowards. Again, do a comparison. Who is what? Uh, uh, living their lives closest to the scriptures. Who's following the scriptures? Okay? Acts 5 and 29, it says, Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. That's the thing. We ought to obey What's written, we ought to obey our Heavenly Father and His Son rather than men. Okay? When men tell you to, that's all link up and let's get our lick back against Palestinians. Let's be carnal. Let's do this. Let's do that. What did the Lord say? The Lord said, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Okay? And meddle not in many matters. So when you put these scriptures in play, all these different uh, dudes out there calling themselves Israelites, are they following that? And if they're not following it, you can see that they have problems. They have a, a serious problem. Okay? Are they really about the Lord at that point, or are they about themselves if they're not following the scriptures? These things you have to watch and see. Then you'll see who the true men of the Lord are, all right? Those that follow what is written. If ones that are not out, if there's ones out there claiming they're men of the Lord and they're not following what's written, you can weed them out as false prophets, false teachers. This is what this is how you look for shit like that, man. By following and taking heed to the scriptures, you can see false cats out here. Simple as that. Right? We kind of went into Luke 14 and 23, but I'll read it again. Luke 14, 23. And the Lord said unto the servant, go out into the highways and hedges. So, you know, the, the elder, uh, um, Manata Zakba, the elder Yashawamba, they, you know, different brothers went into uh, the hedges part, okay? Which we know that by looking up the word. You have certain places that are not as busy as the highways, so you're going to have some servants go actually out to those parts as well. Remember, the scripture says this gospel must be preached in all the world. That's all the world, everywhere. Okay? Everywhere at some point. All right? Even the hood, brothers, was there at some point. All right? And it says, um, 2 Timothy 4 and 2, preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. See, we do this according to doctrine. We reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. We're not out there to get at people personally. We're doing this according to the Lord's will. This is the Lord's doctrine. Okay? If you're not doing according to the Lord's will and his doctrine, his teaching, then we're going to say something as simple as that. Simple as that. Okay? Now it says, preach the word, be instant in season and out of season. I kind of already touched on it, but we're going to touch on it again. Look at different people out there calling themselves Israelites. Are they preaching the word being instant in season and out of season? All right? 
Matter of fact, let, now let me go back to the blue letter and get it. Now let's get 1 Timothy 4. Let me see. Salakia. And bear with me. Because it's not um, Salakia. Lost my um, uh, 2 Timothy. I don't know why I said uh, 1 Timothy. 2 Timothy. Okay. All right. Now, when you go to uh, preach the word, right, be instant in season and out of season. There's a point I wanted to bring up in this. Let's go to the inner linear. Be instant. Right. Be instant. You see, be ready to be at hand of time to come upon. Right. Now, it says to be at hand, be ready. So it says be ready. So you can you can change the instant to be ready, and it says what? In season, out of season. Let's go to in season. It says seasonably, opportunely, when the opportunity occurs. So you have to be ready when it's seasonably in its proper time, when it's in its opportune time. Look, it also says conveniently in season so you have to be ready when it's convenient when is a when it's a convenient time when it's a, a nice summer day when it's a nice spring day when it's a nice fall and winter day be ready to teach so we go out there weekly okay always ready to teach when it's convenient right but let's look at the flip side because it says in season let's go to out of season Unseasonable, unseasonable, aka, look, inopportunely, not as convenient, out of season. What are examples of that? We had the nice summer day, winter, spring, fall day, because we, we get some good days within the winter and, and uh, fall as well, okay? Weather wise, that is just a, it's a, a bearable day, right? Let's look at the opposite side when it's inopportunely, unseasonably. When it's freezing cold, okay? When it's pouring down raining, you have men that have to go under the underhang and teach. Why? Because we don't want to be soaked by the rain. So we go underneath these underhangs. Brothers bring multiple umbrellas out. Rain going nuts, but guess what? We bunching together being under the umbrellas, and guess what? We're teaching. And it's been times when we had a storm and people still came up and listened, and we had the umbrellas out. So we got to be ready to teach when it's in season and out of season. Hey, out of season is not only just talking about that bad weather right there. It could be talking about a sweltering hot day. It could be a, a blazing summer day, hot. That could feel like it's uh, not opportune, inopportune. You see? All right. Be instant in season and out of season. Now, when you compare what group of men are ready in season and out of season, then you have to compare them other groups out there, other men call themselves Israelites, and look at their works and see that they're preaching the word, are they preaching the word in season and out of season, when it's opportune and when it's inopportune, are they preaching the word? And are they reproving, rebuking, and exhorting with all long suffering and doctrine? Not personal feelings with doctrine. If they're not doing this, this is how you weed out false teachers, false prophets. Because they're not doing what's according to what is written. That's why I'm naming this uh, uh, video Compare according to the scriptures, who today is following closest to the scriptures. Okay? Who, and I only say that humbly when I, when I keep saying closest because we fall short of a lot of things. Brothers still sin in this flesh. But the thing is, we're trying to the best of our ability with our faith. So who, who follows closest to the scriptures Today, if you had to compare, you would have to say the men of GMS are doing every last one of these things right now, man. 
Every last one of these things, brothers, start with our apostles, the elders on down. You would have to say we're doing every last one of these things mentioned. And you can read these things and see who ain't doing it. But they're the ones with the biggest mouths, man. Another one, 1 John 4, 1, beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of the most high. Because many false prophets are going out into the world. And how we try the spirits? With the scriptures. All right? That's how you can see who's a false prophet and who's a false teacher if they're going outside of the spirit of God. Okay? And dealing with the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth. If they're not going accordingly, then they're false. And guess what? We try, we prove the spirits whether they are of the most high. If there's a person on the outside, just because they say shalom, hey, Akim, and, and, and they know a few Hebrew, they may have a garment, doesn't mean we just let them in the camp. It could be agents out there, which there are agents out there. So do these other Israelite groups, they just allow just men to come to their uh, camp just because they say shalom? That's why all these people keep talking about, well, look at our numbers, look at our groups, and we got numbers too. Yeah, because you're just allowing anybody old in. You're not proving these people. And just as fast as they're coming in, they're leaving y'all, man. All right? see let me just get this one um then i'll close it up then i'll just get this one just for, um you know because i have it this is john 5 and 23 it says that all men should honor the son even as they honor the father he that honoreth not the son honoreth not the father which have sent him so when we put yahweh shy up and worship yahweh shy we are in turn worshiping the heavenly father yahweh now you have some men out there that don't put Yahweh Shai first. They say you don't worship Yahweh Shai. Okay? And Yahweh Shai also comes in the volume of the book. He's the word. You have men out there that don't honor the word, what's written. So if they don't honor what's written, they're not honoring the Father. Do a comparison and see what dudes out there call themselves Israelites, see if they fit this. We know a particular group that say you don't worship Yahweh Shai. Okay? Do a comparison. According to the scriptures, who today is the closest to following the scriptures? And in turn, you can see on the opposite side, who today is not following the scriptures. And those are the false teachers and prophets. Hope brothers and Akim out there have been edified in the spirit, man. These are the things to watch and compare. Hey, let me get this, uh, let me get this uh, last scripture. It just came to mind. Matthew 7 and uh, verse 1. You see it? Judging others. Matthew 7 and 1. Judge not that ye be not judged. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. The Bible is the standard of measurement. This is how you measure things according, according to the spirit. You measure it by what is written. If they're doing according to what's written in the scriptures, more than likely, in its totality, more than likely they're righteous men of the Lord. If they're not doing it, well, what are they? False teachers, false prophets. The standard is the scriptures. So we don't care about the emotional uh, uh, statements they bring out. You guys are cowards. You guys are this. You guys are that. You just doing this, doing that. Are we going according to what is written? That's all I want to talk about. Call Haloyim, Yahweh, Vashim, Yahweh Shai, Vashim, Kakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone that rule in Teeswell. Peace and Shalom to the elect as always. Double shalom.